Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of stampwithnelly.com. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in the UK. And yesterday I took part in a blog hop with this card here using the brand new quite curvy bundle from Stamping Up. So we've got dies and uh, stamps to coordinate. These can only be bought at the moment as a bundle. Um, and I will have a link to my blog where you can um, then go and check out my Stamping Up so shop and purchase this bundle if you wish to do so. So this was a team blog hop, so I will also have a link back to that so that you can get lots more inspiration on using this bundle and the other products that come in the same sort of suite. So for mine yesterday, I used the Just Jade um, card and ink, ribbon, paper, um, embellishments the whole lot and I also decorated my envelope as well. Um, I did that the same way as I did the bottom of that piece there so I will just show you that one um, and you can do the same on your envelope should you wish to. So today I'm going to change that up and I have done some preparation with Bumblebee. So I've got my card base, I've got my layer for inside, I've got this piece and I'll put all the measurements in my blog um, and this bit for, for there as well. I've also cut a little bit to do this little banner. Um, so first things first really is deciding where we want to put the dies. So we've got this one here that has these little dots and the, the cutting edge is there. And I also used this one here, which as well as cutting um, out those ivy leaf shapes, it also has um, these little embossing bits on there as well. So there's, there's two different layers to that. You've got the cutting and then you've got the embossing that's not quite so, too, uh, quite so prominent, so it doesn't actually cut on there. So it gives a lovely detail. And what I did was I cut the Whisper White part and then I cut a scrap of Just Jade and used the, the bits cut out of the Just Jade to infill on the Whisper White. So I'm going to do that again with the Bumblebee. So this one will look a bit more autumnal. Um, so I just, it's really just a case of deciding how much of each, um, bit you want to show. So I could have less of the white and, and more of the designer series paper. Um, I could do it at a different angle like that. It's totally up to you. Um, all I did was make sure that when I put that one down, I've got that one in line with it. So I think I'm going to stick with that kind of shape like that. So I need to bring in my cut and emboss machine. And because I'm using dies, I need my platform number one. Number two, I need number three, and then I want to have my card and my dies. So I'm just going to pop that on there like that, and then put another number three plate on top and wind that through. that to the side for a moment and we'll need to bring it back in and I've got this piece that I am going to use on my card front alongside that bit there okay 
I don't need any of those white bits. So I'm just going to take them all off and pop that in my waste bin beside me. I will clean that bit out later on. And I've got a scrap of Bumblebee card. And I want to put this one back on it. But I'm going to make sure that I've got all of the little bits out. That, yep, got that clean. Nothing else left in that. And I'm going to run that back through my cut and emboss machine. So I'll just bring that back in and run that through. Okay. rid of the other bits but I'm just going to leave that there. Now there's a couple of them that have stayed in and I'm kind of just putting them back where they should be yep, clear now because I want to make sure that I'm putting them in the right place on this bit here. So on my my card base is 14 and a half centimeters wide. I'm just going to flip that over to the centimeters side and let me see that there. So this layer I want to be 14 centimetres by 10 centimetres. So there is a little bit of an, an overlap there. So what I'm going to do is just add some liquid glue along there. Put that back so that it's lined up. And I want that to be in line with the 10 centimetres there. And it's great using your grid paper because you've got the lines to keep yourself right on that as well. Okay, so that is that layer. But on this one, you'll notice that I've got some ribbon on it as well. So I'm going to do the same and just cut off enough ribbon. And I'll add the bow on afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to use tear and tape to put that in place. When I can find the end. It's just like when you're wrapping up your Christmas presents. You can never find the, the end of your sticky tape. Right. So again, I'm going to use my grid paper just to make sure that I've got this little bit of ribbon straight. I'm going to do it a bit further up than I did on the last one. Bring that over and just put that in place there. And I'm in line there. Flip that over and that will just keep that in place there too. Okay. So we've got a nice straight bit going over and I am now just going to add this layer on to my card base. So bear with me a moment while I do that. And now what I need to do is to infill all of these bits there. Um, I will just add tiny little bits of glue in the first few. And I know that's my first one there. 
so I can pick it up, take it off the, it's turned round, and I can just pop that in there. Hmm, have I got the right one? Or am I upside down? Oh, I've got this upside down, haven't I? Not that one. That one needs to go up there. I'm just going to put that in just now. Because I do have some glue on the back of it. Like that. That just fits neatly in there. So that will be that one. It needs to go in there. That one. It needs to go in there and so on and so forth so bear with me while i do this and i will be back with you in a moment or two Okay, so I have got this bit and a tiny little bit to add in at that end as well. But that does kind of overlap a little bit. So I can just kind of eyeball that, that I know that that is where I want to cut. If I can get that back out of there again. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be precise because it's tone on tone and only if somebody was going to look really, really closely would they notice that you might have missed a tiny little bit on there. So that's how I did that bit. The putty on the Take Your Pick tool is just awesome for this job. It helps you slide things into place nice and easily. So again, this bit needs a little bit trimmed off. It's so tidy. So I need just that tiny corner on that. This could be tricky. Might have been better with a fine tip glue for this little bit here. Perfect. Just hold that in place for a second. Nope. That's it. There we go. So I've got all of that inlaid now so you can see the um a little bit extra glue there and um, you can see the veins on those leaves and that little bit of embossing on there as well so a little bit tricky a little bit fiddly um but i reckon it's worth the effort on that so the next bit was to um stamp my sentiment which i thought i'd put on a block but i oh i have i have it's there just couldn't see it. So got my sentiment on the block and I have, um, I do actually have a little bit. I probably could have used part of that as well, but I may well end up using that for a different card. Um, I could possibly even have just chopped a bit off that and just have a channel of that paper through there. Um, loads of, of different options with this set and as I say if you did miss the um, Poodles team blog hop yesterday then please do check it out it's definitely worth your while okay so I've got made with love just for you and I'm just gonna snip those in Now, 
actually for a make mess. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a curl. Probably should have waited a moment or two. Make sure that the ink was totally dry. Um, and in fact, I think I need to make that a little bit shorter. That'll do. Okay, so I want to have that like this one, I've actually got two dimensionals stacked on top of each other there so that it gives it that um, nice curl on that. So I'm going to do the same and I'm just going to put them in the middle there, take the backing off that, add the second one just on top like that. Now I'm actually thinking I need to make this quite a bit shorter as well. Maybe a little bit shorter again actually. I'll do. So I want to put glue on there and on there so that I've got my two ends flushed down and I've got that little dimension on there. Final bit is to tie a bow and add that on there and I will do that with glue dots. Probably should have prepped this bit beforehand as I'm rubbish at tying bows. As you can see. Um, I should have a faff about with that later. Let's chop that off. So I will put that on with a, a couple of glue dots on there and trim the tails off. But the other bit I wanted to show you um, uh, what I did was this bit in here. So this lovely huge big um, stamp, leaf stamp. I am going to ink up with Bumblebee ink, just keep it all the same. Okay. And do it that way. And just stamp partially along the bottom like that. And then I want to bring in my wink of Stella and if you work quickly enough that ink that you have stamped with will bleed with your wink of Stella and will allow you to give a subtle bit of colour to those leaves like that And as well as giving you some colour, it's giving you some lovely shine and sparkle on that as well. And then all I did was pick up some more of the ink from the stamp so that I can add a little bit of extra colour onto some of the, the leaves just to give a little bit more definition and a little bit of contrast as you can see we've got some light and we've got some dark or darker ones on there so I'm going to add a little bit on that one underneath there and as I say I did exactly the same on the envelope flap as well if you'll be able to see the, the shimmer 
on that, but I love Winko Stella. Um, just remember, clean your brush off so that the next time that you're um, adding Wink of Stella to a project, it, it, it isn't bumblebee coloured. And I'm just going to add that to the inside there. So as I say, um, I will leave a link to my blog post in the description bar below. If you have enjoyed today's project and this video, then please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, thank you very much for tuning in. And I'd love it if you click on the subscribe button so that you get to see my next projects as well. I will faff about with that bow and tidy it up for my photographs. Um, but here's the one that I made previously. Oh, that reminds me, I've got some enamel dots to add on as well. So these are the in colour enamel dots and I'm just adding a few of them just as an extra little detail. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, take care. Bye bye.